Here at the Intelligent Systems Lab, we want to know how brains understand the world. When we look at things, like this cup of water, we know what to do with them. We can imagine picking them up, throwing them around, what they feel like, and what they sound like. As of right now, we do not know how to give this power to imagine to things that we make. We try to understand this power by looking into the animal brain while it plays around in a space that it finds interesting. When things in that space change, animals are surprised and look like they are trying to explain what happened. After that, they move in a different way when they expect that the space around them may change. By looking into their brains before and after the animals change what they expect, we hope to learn more about the brain's power to understand worlds. When we try to look at the brain, we are faced with a big problem. The brain is made of many cells that work together. We can hear them working, but we can only listen to very few of them at a time. Because of this, we tried to build better ways to listen to or look at more cells at the same time so we can better understand what they are working on. The animals we usually study in neuroscience keep their brains hidden deep inside of their bodies, and so it's very hard to watch the brain while it is working inside of a moving animal. But this is slightly less true about cuttlefish. Instead of packing most of their nervous system into a brain the way humans do, most of the cuttlefish nervous cells are out in the body. Cuttlefish neurons control special cells in the skin that can change the cuttlefish's form, color, and feel. One type of special cell is called a chromatophore. It's like a tiny bag full of color with muscles holding onto it on all sides. Each muscle has three or four neurons wrapped around it. When the muscles are relaxed, the bag of color is closed tight and can't be seen. But when the neurons tell the muscles to pull, the bag of color can grow up to five times larger, making the skin in that area change color. The cuttlefish's skin has over 20 million chromatophores, each controlled by 20 or more neurons. This means that over a hundred million neurons are working together to control how a cuttlefish appears to other animals. Given that, we believe that looking carefully at cuttlefish skin while it moves through the world could be a way to watch both single neurons and large groups of neurons at the same time without cutting open any part of the animal. To try this idea, we built a water box in which cuttlefish try to catch food while we watch them. We gave the cuttlefish a spot to relax at one end and offered it food to catch at the other end. We kept the floors and walls of the water box gray and boring because we wanted to see what the skin looks like when the cuttlefish isn't busy trying to hide. The cuttlefish get to eat for free two days out of the week, then they fast for one day. The other four days of the week, the cuttlefish must catch their food in the box. Each day, each animal gets half an hour to catch as much food as it can. To get the food to enter the water, they must go to the home side of the box. Once they do, food will enter the water every minute or so, until they catch it. Once they catch it, they have to go back to the home side of the box again for more food to appear. Now we're going to watch a cuttlefish catch some food. When a cuttlefish is trying to catch food, it usually does three things. First, you can tell when the cuttlefish first notices the food. It turns its eyes, head, and body so that it can look at the food, and it may also change its skin color or lift some of its arms. Second, the cuttlefish will move closer to the food. Third, the cuttlefish tries to grab the food. It pushes two tentacles out from where they were hidden just above its mouth, using its four middle arms to point the tentacles. Then the cuttlefish throws its tentacles, a moment that we will call tentacles go ballistic. When a tentacle shot is made, the cuttlefish's skin changes in a way that is different from all of its other skin changes. For now, we'll call this skin change the tentacle shot pattern. 
The tentacle shot pattern always shows up after tentacles go ballistic, but before the tentacles have come all the way back to the cuttlefish's mouth. If the tentacle shot missed and no food actually makes it back to the cuttlefish's mouth, then the tentacle shot pattern shows up but quickly goes away. If the tentacle shot catches food and brings it back to the mouth, the tentacle shot pattern stays on the cuttlefish's skin for much longer. The tentacle shot pattern also stays if the cuttlefish's tentacles get stuck on something, like a plastic skewer or the side of the box. Now we're going to take a closer look at that tentacle shot. This cuttlefish is named Ender. The movie has been edited so that Ender's body stays in the same spot, which makes it easier to see the changes of its skin. Like before, Ender first lines up its body with the food, then moves closer, then throws its tentacles. Notice the very high contrast tentacle shot pattern that starts to appear even before the tentacles are back in the mouth. In this case, the tentacle shot pattern stays for a long time, but we're not sure yet if that is because the tentacles got stuck on the plastic skewer or not. We are pretty sure that the tentacle shot pattern shows up every time a cuttlefish makes a tentacle shot. Here, we are showing every tentacle shot by Ender where it caught the food. The first tentacle shot is in the upper left corner, and the last tentacle shot is in the lower right corner. In all cases, the tentacle shot pattern stays on the cuttlefish's back for several seconds. Now let's take a look at all of Ender's tentacle shots that missed the food. Again, when we look carefully at the moment that tentacles go ballistic, we see the tentacle shot pattern appear before the tentacles return to the mouth. But then once the tentacles are back in the mouth, the tentacle shot pattern quickly disappears. To help us understand the tentacle shot pattern, it would make our lives a lot easier if a computer could also learn how to find the tentacle shot pattern. We think we can do this by telling a computer to look for places where the picture goes from very white to very black or very black to very white. These places are called high contrast edges. When the number of high contrast edges changes quickly from a few to many, this tells the computer that a tentacle shot was probably just made. This is possible thanks to something called a canny edge detector, which tries to work like the human eye. We also think that by making the computer keep track of how long the tentacle shot pattern stays on the cuttlefish's skin, the computer can sort tentacle shots into two groups, the ones that caught the food or the ones that missed food. But for a computer to find the tentacle shot pattern, it first needs to know how to find the cuttlefish as it moves around the water box. When we built the Cuddle Shuttle water box, we placed our video camera high above the water so that it could film the whole box. To make a movie that gives us a closer look at the cuttlefish's skin, I had to take the original movie, zoom in on the cuttlefish, then turn the frame so that the cuttlefish's head always faces to the left and the cuttlefish's body is in the middle of the frame. At first, I did this all by hand in a movie editor for making films. Because the cuttlefish can change nearly every spatial relationship between its body parts, we had no way of standardizing the method for lining up the cuttlefish body in our movies that give us a closer look at the skin. To make this arbitrary process as consistent as possible, I made these closer look movies by myself over the course of about three months. But making close-up movies this way is really slow and not very accurate. If instead a computer could find and track the cuttlefish, then it could make the close-up videos I need much faster than I could make them by hand. But teaching a computer how to find a cuttlefish is not simple, especially when the cuttlefish can disappear from sight by changing the color of its skin. While we will never be able to show a computer all of the possible looks that a cuttlefish might wear, we can help a computer learn how to guess that something is a cuttlefish by showing the computer a large number of the possible looks worn by cuttlefish in the cuttle shuttle. I can do this by marking the position of the cuttlefish at a given moment in the original movies that show the entire cuttle shuttle box. To help a computer find the cuttlefish on its own, I am marking at least 100 different moments for each cuttlefish. These moments need to show some of the different colors and forms that a cuttlefish might wear. 
Each moment is at least 70 video frames long, so that the computer can also learn how the cuttlefish moves through the water. We will group all of these moments together, then share it on the Cuttle Shuttle Analysis Repository on GitHub. We hope that this training dataset can help other people who are also trying to teach computers how to find something without being told exactly what to look for. But before we can help others, there's still a lot of work left to do. Here are some ways that you can help us understand the Cuttle Shuttle dataset. You can help us teach computers how to find cuttlefish by either helping us mark our videos or by writing an algorithm that you'd like to test with our dataset. You can also help us by sending us videos of wild cuttlefish trying to catch food. We would also love to hear your thoughts on these questions. Why do cuttlefish make the tentacle shot pattern? How much can we read about the cuttlefish nervous system by looking at their skin, given the tight coupling between neurons and chromatophores? What is a brain? What is a nervous system? How do we know when something is intelligent or acting intelligently? How do cuttlefish see? If you have any other questions you want to talk about, or if you want to help us work on this data set, feel free to get in touch by writing to tanbi at alum.mit.edu. To learn more, please visit www.everymind.online slash cuttle shuttle.